Local support for News 6 has been provided by the Northwest Ohio Educational Technology Foundation, Bowling Green State University, and the members of WBGU-TV. Hi, I'm Tiffany Bland from St. Michael's School. Welcome to News 6. With today's first story, here's Michael Fitzgerald. Do you know that you don't have to board an airplane to fly? And of course, you don't have to be a bird. News 6 had just interviewed Mr. Randall Taylor, who flies his story in a beautiful hot air balloon. Here's Anna Russo with the story. You can get a bird Finley, thanks to Mr. Taylor's hot air balloon. Can you tell us how big your balloon is? It's approximately 105,000 cubic feet uh, in volume and about 70 feet high approximately. It's huge. What is the balloon made out of? Well, the balloon is divided into two parts, uh, specifically what they call the gondola or the basket. That's made of wicker and the envelope and that's the big part that you see the most of when it's flying through the air that's uh, also we call it the bag or the envelope that's made of ripstop nylon how does a hot air balloon work a hot air balloon works by heating up a very large volume of air and causing the air molecules to separate thereby being lighter than the air on the outside of the balloon so that the balloon rises in the air like a bubble would in water. How high can you fly? You can fly about as high as you would like within reason. I've flown to 14,500 feet myself and uh, I know that the record uh, is somewhere in between 60 and 70,000 feet for a hot air balloon. Where have you flown your balloon? We've flown our balloon uh, almost literally all over the world. Some of the highlights were Brazil and uh, we've been to Japan several times and to Calgary for the winter, winter Olympics and many places across the United States. Today's News 6 is produced by the 6th grade class of St. Michael's School. St. Michael's School is located in Finley, which was founded in 1812 and has a population of about 40,000. Our next story will let you visit with Mrs. Bev Tulo, who entertained the 6th graders with her unique collection of miniature shoes. Here's Kurt Dotson with the story. You can walk all over the world with Beva Tulo's shoes. How did you get interested in collecting miniature shoes? My husband had a shoe repair shop, and I thought it would be interesting to have something, you know, thinking about it. So I was getting bisque figures of shoe repairmen, but they were too hard to find. So we saw every place we went, little shoes. So I told my family, my family, my friends, and everybody bought me little shoes. Can you tell us a little bit about your collection? I have 302 shoes. Now that's not pairs of shoes. That's shoes, you know. And then some that are especially interesting. Like one friend, Amy Dehaven, went to uh, Germany. Her brother was there. And it was when the Olympics were on in 72, and she brought me one. And at the same time, another friend of mine who was in England got me one. And it was the very same one. Where do you get your shoes? I get them mostly from friends and family and a lot of people would come in the shop they we had them in the window at the shop and they'd bring them in and give them you know to my husband to bring home to me and then we traveled a lot and every place we traveled I got one. what is your favorite shoe generally just the first one or the last one i get that i you know always like that best but i have so many that have a lot of memories people have got me you know from different places that's what they used to wear back in the renaissance and that's Do you have someone that you wish to have met if you could go back in time? This week's Kids View question asked the sixth graders whom they had in mind. Here's what we found out. 
Hi, my name is Holly Sadler with today's Kids View question. If you go back in time and meet anyone, who would it be and why? If I could go back in time to meet anyone, I would meet Jesus because he showed us how to love and respect each other. If I could go back in time to meet anyone, it would be Joe DiMaggio because he had influence on kids and to help him be a better athlete. If I could go back in time and meet anyone, I would meet Charlemagne because he was a good ruler and he almost doubled the size of his kingdom. Our last story today features Mr. Robert McKee, whose huge collection of flags walked the sixth graders across the nation and across the world. Kyle Ball has a story. There is a world of flag waving at Mr. McKee's museum. How did your museum get started? The well, museum got started uh, this fall, really. We ex expanded out of uh, an attic in our house. Uh, been collecting flags for about 35 years, and it just sort of outgrew where we had them. And so we built this building adjacent to our house to put the flags in so more people can see them. How many flags do you have? We have close to 800 flags. We have uh, city flags. We have state flags. We have... Uh, 19th century American flags, almost any type of flag you can think of we, we have here. Where do you get your flags? We get our flags when we travel. We, my wife and I like to travel around the country and when we're in cities, we're in different locales, we try to pick up the local flags there. We get flags from antique malls, we get in uh, antique shops from flea markets, uh, from people's trunks and their attics. Can you tell us more about your collection? Right now, we're trying to expand the uh, city flags portion of the collection. Uh, this summer, we had about eight to ten city flags, and we wanted to expand that because a lot of cities now in the United States have flags, and that's an aspect of flag collecting and that people don't really get to see that much. They see state flags, they see national flags, but they don't get to see uh, the different city flags. That's all for this week's News 6. Thank you for tuning in. Join us next week when Ada Elementary School visits News 6. Local support for News 6 has been provided by the Northwest Ohio Educational Technology Foundation, Bowling Green State University, and the members of WBGU-TV.